the ideal world I'd like to imagine is one where humanity are like the board, the board members of a company where the AGI is the CEO. So it would be, I would like the, the picture, which I would imagine is you have some kind of different entities, different countries or cities, and the people that leave their vote for what the AGI that represents them should do. And then the AGI that represents them goes and does it. I think a picture like that, I find very appealing. And you could have multiple, you would have an AGI for a city, for a country, and it would be, it would be trying to, in effect, take the democratic process to the next level. And the board can always fire the CEO. Essentially, press the reset button, say. Press the reset. Re-randomize re re the parameters. You know? But let me sort of, that, that's actually, okay, that, that's a beautiful vision, I think, as long as it's possible to, con to press the reset button. Do you think it will always be possible to press the reset button? So I think that it's, def it's definitely will be possible to build. So you're talking, so the question that I really understand from you is, will, will, will humans or the, you know, <clears throat> humans people have control over the AI systems that they build? Yes. And my answer is, it's definitely possible to build AI systems which will want to be controlled by their humans. Wow, that's part of their, so it's not that just they can't help but be controlled, but that's, that's um, the, they exist, the, one of the objectives of their existence is to be controlled. In the same way that human parents generally want to help their children, they want their children to succeed. It's not a burden for them. They are excited to help the children and to feed them and to dress them and to take care of them. And I believe with high conviction that the same will be possible for an AGI. It will be possible to program an AGI, to design it in such a way that it will have a similar deep drive that it will be delighted to fulfill. And the drive will be to help humans flourish. Now, I think the question of what, what I'll be doing or what people will be doing after AGI comes, it's a very tricky question. You know, I think where, where will people find meaning? But I think, I think that that's something that AI could help us with. Like, one thing I imagine is that we'll all be able to become more enlightened because we'd interact with an AGI that will help us see the world more correctly, or become better on the inside as a result of interacting. Like, imagine talking to the best meditation teacher in history. I think that will be a helpful thing. But I also think that because the world will change a lot, it will be very hard for people to understand what is happening precisely and how to, and how to really contribute. One thing that I think some people will choose to do is to become part AI in order to really expand their minds and understanding and to really be able to solve the hardest problems that society will face then. Are you going to become part AI? Very tempting. It is tempting, yeah. Well, uh, do you think there'll be physically embodied humans in uh, 3,000? 3,000, oh. How do I know what's going to happen in 3,000? Like, what, what does it look like? Are there still, like, humans walking around on Earth? Or have you guys thought concretely about what you actually want this world to look like? 3,000. Well, I mean, that, 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 the thing is, here's the thing. Like, let, me, let me describe to you what I think is not quite right about the question. Like, it implies, like, oh, like, we get to decide how we want the world to look like. I don't think that picture is correct. I think change is the only constant. And so, of course, even after AGI is built, it doesn't mean that the world will be static. The world will continue to change. The world will continue to evolve. And it will go through all kinds of transformations. And I really have no, I don't think anyone has any idea of how the world will look like in 3000. But I do hope that there will be a lot of descendants of human beings who will live happy, fulfilled lives where they're free to do as they wish, as they see fit where they are the ones who are solving their own problems. Like one of the things which I would not want, one, one, one world which I would find very unexciting is one where, you know, we build this powerful tool and then the government said, okay, so the AGI said that society shall be run in such a way and now we shall run society in such a way. I'd much rather have a world where people are still free to make their own mistakes and suffer their consequences and gradually evolve morally and progress forward on their own through their own strength. See what I mean? With the AGI providing more like a base safety net 
How much time do you spend thinking about these kinds of things versus just doing the research that? I do think about those things a fair bit, yeah. I think those are very interesting questions. So in what ways have the capabilities we have today, in what ways have they surpassed where you expected them to be in 2015? And in what ways are they still not where you would have expected them to be by this point? I mean, in fairness, they did surpass what I expected them to be in 2015. In, tw in 2015, I, my thinking was a lot more, I just don't want to bet against deep learning. I want to make the biggest uh -huh. possible bet on deep learning. Don't know how, but it will figure it out. But is there any specific way in which it's uh, been more than you expected or less than you expected? Like some concrete prediction you had in 2015 that's been pronounced? You know, unfortunately, I don't remember concrete predictions I made in 2015. But I definitely, but I definitely think that overall, in 2015, I just want to, to, to move, to make the biggest bet possible on deep learning. But I didn't know exactly. I didn't have a specific idea of how far things will go in seven years. Well, I mean, 2015, I did have all these bets with people in 2016, maybe 2017, that things will go really far. But specifics. So it's like, it's both, it's both the case that it surprised me and I was making these aggressive predictions, but I think maybe I believe them only 50% only only on the inside. Uh-huh. Well, what do you believe now that even most people at OpenAI would find far-fetched? I mean, I think that at this, because we communicate a lot at OpenAI, people have a pretty good sense of what I think. And so, yeah, we, we reached the point at OpenAI, but I think we see eye to eye on all these questions. What's the meaning of life? Oh. <laughs> I think the question is, is, is wrong in some way. I think that the question implies that there is, an ex, there is an objective answer, which is an external answer, you know, your meaning of life is X. Right. I think what's going on is that we exist and that's amazing. And we should try to make the most of it and try to maximize our own value and enjoyment of a very short time while we do exist. It's, it's funny because action does require an objective function. It's definitely there in some form but it's difficult to make it explicit and maybe impossible to make it explicit, I guess is what you're getting at. And that's an interesting fact of an RL environment. Well, but I, I was making a slightly different point is that humans want things and their wants create the drives that cause them to, you know, our wants are our objective functions, our individual objective functions. We can later decide that we want to change, that what we wanted before is no longer good and we want something else. Yeah, but they're so dynamic. There's, there's got to be some underlying sort of Freud. There's a, it thinks there's like sexual stuff. There's people who think it's the fear, of, fear of death, and there's also uh, the desire for knowledge, and you know all these kinds of things. Uh, procreation, the, the sort of all the evolutionary arguments. It seems to be there might be some kind of fundamental objective function from uh, from which everything else um, emerges. But it seems like it's, that's very difficult. I mean, to make I, think, I, th I, think, I think that probably is an evolutionary objective function, which is to survive and procreate and make, make your students succeed. That would be my guess. But it doesn't give an answer to the question of what's the meaning of life. I think you can see how humans are part of this big process, this ancient process. We are, we are, we exist on a small planet and that's it. So given that we exist, try to make the most of it and try to enjoy more and suffer less as much as we can. Let me ask two silly questions about life. One, do you have regrets? Moments that if you uh, went back, you would do differently. And two, are there moments that you're especially proud of that made you truly happy? So I can answer that. I can answer both questions. <laughs> of, of course, there are, there's a huge number of choices and decisions that I've made that with the benefit of hindsight, I wouldn't have made them. And I do experience some regret, but you know, I try to take solace in the knowledge that at the time I did the best I could. And in terms of things that I'm proud of, there are, I'm very fortunate to have things I'm proud to have done things I'm proud of. And they made me happy for some, for some time, but I don't think that that is the source of happiness. So your academic accomplishments, all the papers, you're one of the most cited people in the world all of the breakthroughs I mentioned in computer vision and language and so on, is what is the source of happiness and pride for you? I mean, all those things are a source of pride for sure. I'm very and grateful for having done all those things. And it was very fun to do them.
but happiness comes from, but you know, you can, ha happiness, well, my current view is that happiness comes from our, to a lot, to a very large degree from the way we look at things. You know, you can have a simple meal and be quite happy as a result, or you can talk to someone and be happy as a result as well. Or con conversely, you can have a meal and be disappointed that the meal wasn't a better meal. Mm 